And I want to help you understand uh, how we actually go through this process of having devices registered with autopilot. Now, remember that um, if I was working with an OEM like Dell or HP, they actually have the ability to um, upload device IDs into your environment if you let them know your domain name. All right. Um, but you might have to do this yourself. It could be that uh, you, you don't want them doing it. You could just get a spreadsheet from them with the device IDs in it and you could upload it yourself. Or maybe you're working with a smaller OEM that, uh, that doesn't have a partnership with Microsoft and, and they could provide you with these device IDs and you can put it into a CSV file and upload it yourself. All right. So that's sort of the idea here. Um, and so what I want to show you is uh, where this would be done. So here I am on endpoint.microsoft.com. I'm going to click on devices. All right. And then I'm going to go to um, right here where it says enroll devices under device enrollment. All right. And if I scroll down just a little bit here, this is where it talks about the Windows Autopilot deployment program. And then if you click the devices button here, this is where you would import it. So you could import that spreadsheet right here as a CSV file. All right. Now you might say, well, you know, how, how would a, if I had a machine and I wanted to collect the device ID, how could I do that myself? Okay. So if you do a, a quick search on, um, either Google or Bing or whatever, and there, there is actually a PowerShell command called get when get dash windows autopilot info. You can search for that. And this is the command you do it. But there is a, an article that I always like to point out. This is manually register devices with autopilot. Uh, so you can do this. You can do this with um, Config Manager. Or you can use Windows PowerShell. In this case, we're going to look at doing this with PowerShell because we don't have Config Manager. All right. So we'll go there, and they tell you. The, the series of commands to do this. First off, be advised that there is a command called a script, really, called git windows autopilot info. Now you have to get this script. This script is located in the uh, PowerShell gallery, which is where Microsoft stores all of the latest and greatest scripts. Now you can actually run a command that's going to let you get this script. Install script. But there's a couple things we need to do. So let's say I'm sitting at this machine here. This is the machine that I want to collect a um, the device ID. I'm also going to show you how you would do this remotely as well. But I'm going to right click the start button here and I'm going to go to terminal. Okay, or maybe PowerShell, whichever operating system you're using. Okay, and the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure scripts are allowed to be ran. Now, if you didn't know this in PowerShell, there's a thing called the execution policy that will prevent scripts from being ran um, for obviously hacking reasons. But I'm going to type git dash execution policy. Okay. So PowerShell is just kind of lagging a little bit here. There it is. Git execution policy. So you can see right now that it's restricted. I need to change that. Or if I try to install a script on this machine, it is going to block me. All right. So um, I'm going to type set dash execution policy, and then I'm going to set say dash execution policy, and I'm just hitting tab to autocomplete. And then I'm going to set that to unrestricted. All right. So now if I type get execution policy, it should say unrestricted. So now I'm OK. I'm able to install this command So or install the script. So if I look here at the PowerShell gallery, here's the script, install dash script dash name get Windows auto get dash windows autopilot info. I'm going to copy that and just run that command here in this PowerShell. So install dash script dash name get windows autopilot info. All right. Now it is going to say that in order to run scripts, it's got to basically create a, a folder for scripts and it's got to create what's called a path variable, which is just a place in memory where it can remember where the scripts are. So am I sure I want to do that? Yes. I'm going to hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and allow that to happen. Now, another thing that might happen is um, if this is the first time you've ever downloaded anything from the PowerShell gallery, it may ask you to install something called NuGet. Um, there it is right there. And all you got to do is say yes to that. It is okay to install NuGet. NuGet is a provider, a service provider for PowerShell that can go out and install 
PowerShell uh, commands uh, and scripts from the gallery. The next thing it, add, it tells you is that you're about to install a command from an untrusted repository, and that sounds scary. The repository is the PowerShell gallery, which is actually owned by Microsoft, oddly enough. The reason it's called a um, unrestricted repository, though, or, um, sorry, untrusted repository, is because uh, even though it's owned by Microsoft, it actually is open to the community. So people that don't work for Microsoft can upload commands. The good news is there is a moderation community as well, moderators that check these commands to make sure they aren't malicious. So for the most part, even though it says it's untrusted, you can trust it. Okay, So I've now installed that, and uh, I'm ready to run the command that's going to let me get the device ID from a machine. Okay, So I'll just do that. I'm just going to create a folder, uh, mkdir uh, ID. All right, so we just created a folder. And you could have done that through File Explorer, but I just created it called ID. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to type git dash uh, windows autopilot info dot ps1. That's a PowerShell script. Now, just so you know, if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to, uh, do this against computers over the network, I would type dash computer name and then whatever the names of the computers are that are on the network, I could put a comma like this and it would actually grab the device IDs for all these machines across the network. Now in my case, I am sitting at the computer where I want to, um, to do this, okay? So um, in my case, I'm just gonna put dash output file C colon slash ID slash device ID dot CSV. And let's see if it works. Okay, so it looks like it did. And I'm going to open up File Explorer. And I'm going to go to C drive where it says ID. And then there is the file right there. Now, if you had Excel, uh, you could open this up in Excel and see it. Or if you don't have Excel, you can open it up in Notepad and see it. All right, so we'll just open that up in Notepad. All right, and all right, so there it is. There's a device ID, and it also has a, a, a signature hash value that just verifies mathematically that this ID is correct uh, mathematically. So there it is right there. So now if I go back to uh, endpoint, uh, dot Microsoft.com, let's, let's do it from the start, endpoint.microsoft.com, click devices, okay, go here where it says enroll devices scroll down to devices okay uh, I can now import that uh, file that spreadsheet and if I had collected it from a bunch of computers then it would have obviously worked for a bunch of computers so I could then import that in there and that is how we can uh, import the device IDs into Intune, okay? So the devices now, we, we register this way, a device could then in turn be reconfigured. Now in this video, I was just showing you how to get the device, to find the device ID and import the device ID. We're not actually looking at triggering autopilot to take over machine in, right now. I just wanted to show you how this device ID thing works. So hopefully that uh, all makes sense and now you know how you can collect device IDs from machines. By the way I did want to add I, I waited just a couple minutes so this would finish and I did want to show you that it did finish. You can see the serial number here manufacturer model because it's a virtual machine and then it says currently the profile is not assigned. Okay so that is the state that this will be in uh, when it gets imported. And of course if I had imported a bunch of these obviously you would have a, a different um, these would be listed right here for you, okay? All right, but I just wanted to quickly give you that visualization, and um, that is how the device IDs are going to look once they get imported. Hey, this is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed getting to experience a little bit of this course, and I hope you'll join me on the full adventure. If you'll check the description of this video, you'll see a link that'll show you how you can get access to the full course. Now, in the full course, you're going to learn how to set up a practice environment where you can practice hands-on 
And I'm going to provide you with lots of virtual simulations that you can do 24-7. All you need is a web browser. So I hope you'll join me, and uh, I hope you'll also give me a like and subscribe. I'm trying very, very hard to get the uh, this channel to build and grow, and uh, so I hope you'll take the time to do that.